Welcome to the third installment of William Newton Newswatch. I'm the hospital's director of marketing, Sarah Johnson. We're hosting a watch party right now on Facebook, so be sure to leave your comments right here so we can reply back to you during the show, or we'll try and address them next week. Today's highlighted area of the hospital is the Gary and Mary Brewer Interfaith Chapel. The hospital is still putting the finishing touches on this new space in the H.L. Snyder Medical Foundation Surgery Center. But one of the most interesting elements, I think, are these stained glass panels behind me. These are original to the hospital's old chapel from decades ago. It's great to see them refurbished and brought to life, creating peace for the loved ones of our patients. The hospital is still operating under elevated pandemic precautions, but planning to start opening some elective procedures such as several types of surgeries and mammograms in tandem with the potential lifting of the stay home order. Our CEO, Ben Quinton, commented earlier this week, the hospital really is one of the safest places you can be. Some of the things we are doing to protect our patients include isolating any potential COVID-19 patients in one of three isolation areas, emergency, obstetrics, and inpatient. We have installed negative pressure air units in rooms with potential COVID-19 patients, and we are running HEPA filters throughout the hospital. We are screening all foot traffic that enters the facility, including temperature checks, and we are reducing exposure by having some of our staff, like billing and medical records, work from home. And throughout all of this, the ability to leave home to seek medical care has remained an option to all Kansans. With me today is family practice physician, Dr. Brian Dennett of Winfield Family Care Center. Hello. Hi, how are you this afternoon? Good. So tell me how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected your patients. Well, I think, you know, just like the rest of uh, the world, I think we're all starting to feel a little bit isolated. Uh, but the big things as far as healthcare is that people have been afraid to come in for um, routine visits. So things like checks on blood pressure and diabetes and preventative medicine visits like mammograms and colonoscopies and cholesterol checks, they've all been kind of put on the back burner. So people, people have put off some stuff. And tell us, you know, what is your practice doing differently now uh, to reduce the risk for patients when they do come in? Well, we worked hard to formulate a plan and uh, almost immediately within the, the time of the shutdown order, we initiated the ability to do telemedicine. So if uh, people have uh, um, the ability to connect by video and phone, we can do telemedicine. And so some of the work of uh, family medicine, we can do that way. Uh, probably uh, several patients a day we have done in that manner. In addition, we tried to make uh, our visits here to the office uh, touchless. So uh, patients check can check in on their phone and uh, do their billing and insurance update information. Uh, we tried to limit, uh, limit their time in our lobby so that they're not having to uh, spend time with other patients. We try to get them back almost immediately. So they're spending a little bit more time in the exam room. Our, all of our staff are wearing masks and we're providing masks to our patients when they come in. And we are, we've always been people who hand washed and used hand sanitizer, but now I'm starting to feel like hand sanitizer is my new cologne. Mm -hmm. And also um, we are wearing masks, which that's been something that's been new for us. So I think we're taking precautions and I think it's a, uh, it's safe to go to the doctor and it's safe to be at the hospital if you need to be there. Is there anything else that you would like to share with your patients that, that might be a little uh, you know, apprehensive about you know, coming in to seek medical care or coming to the hospital um, because they might be afraid they might be exposed to COVID-19? I think that, um, I think some fear is healthy. I mean, like that fear is what makes us wash our hands. That fear is what makes us uh, wear a mask. Um, that fear is what makes us spin, stay six feet apart. But at the same time, I don't want fear to kill you. I don't want somebody who is having chest pain not to come to the emergency room to seek care for a heart attack. Um, I don't want people to defer their breast cancer screening or cancer screening. Um, I want people to continue to get their medications from the pharmacy. Work with us or your healthcare provider to uh, make things as safe as possible. We have, we have mechanisms in place at the hospital and our clinic to keep people who um, potentially have COVID uh, separate from uh, non-COVID patients. So uh, I would just say, don't put things off. I, I don't want people to die from fear. I want people to have a healthy fear and respect the disease, but not, not cower from it. 
-hmm. And is there anything else you'd like to let the community know? I just, uh, I appreciate uh, the fact that uh, we have a great hospital in here in town. Um, the, uh, in my time seeing patients uh, during this epidemic at the hospital, it's amazing to see the staff pull together and adapt and uh, uh, work to make it a safe place. So I'm, I'm thankful for uh, William Noon Hospital and I'm glad that I practice in Winfield. Well, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we, we appreciate hearing, you know, for someone on the front lines that has been, um, you know, working directly with patients during the pandemic. So thank you, Dr. Dennett. Testing for COVID-19 has been a hot topic among political leaders, local health officials, and the media. And it certainly has been one of the hospital's biggest challenges due to a shortage of testing supplies. Our next guest is uh, Emily Souter. She is the supervisor of our in-house laboratory, and she has been dealing with that firsthand. Welcome, Emily. Hello, thank you. So tell us about your process um, testing a patient. We have um, inpatient testing, which would be our um, emergency department and nursing unit patients um, that we test on our PCR analyzer in-house, and then we have outpatient samples that come in from clinics. Um, so we don't actually collect a, a lot inside the hospital. Uh, the nursing unit collects them, um, and we're, we're, we do sometimes several a day. How are you dealing with the supply shortage that, that's happening everywhere throughout the nation? Well, we have to get, uh, be creative and conserve them. Um, we, the tests that we brought in-house recently, um, we order them, but we don't always know when we're going to get our, our shipment. And so we really have to conserve and only use them on the frontline um, healthcare worker has symptoms. We would use it to test that person or a person that comes to the hospital with symptoms and um, is in the emergency department or in isolation. Um, so we just really have to conserve what we have and sometimes be creative on um, not ordering them and possibly making our own swabs. You mentioned the PCR test and William Newton Hospital is one of the few hospitals in the state of Kansas to be able to offer that PCR test. What is that? PCR is um, it's called polymerase chain reaction and it's a test that detects the RNA um, from a virus in this case. It, it also works on bacteria. Um, but it's the most sensitive test right now, um, and it's a gold standard, and it's being used at um, large reference labs and our state laboratory as well. It's about a 90-minute turnaround time from collection to reporting, and so it's much faster than sending it out where it could be 24 to 48 hours, but that's still a good turnaround time for as busy as the labs are. So you have been busy. Tell us how many tests have you done so far? I think uh, just at our hospital, um, we've sent out about 57, um, and they've all been negative so far. Um, I think, you know, it, it'll, the testing will pick up soon. Um, like Dr. Dennett was saying, a lot of patients aren't um, seeking, you know, routine medical care, or they're doing their, their basic daily needs and staying at home. So people, you know, are hopefully staying well. Mm -hmm. so. All right. And last week uh, was National Medical Laboratory Professionals Week. And even in the, the quarantine, you were able to uh, do a little celebration with your staff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So we also do some fun games and we have, uh, we usually buy shirts, but this year one of our staff members made them. Um, and it's just a time for us to celebrate our profession and um, we really we really look forward to it. A lot of hospitals this year canceled that particular celebration. Our situation is a little bit different here, so we went ahead and did it and it was great. Well, thank you to Emily for kind of giving us a behind the scenes look at what it's like to be in the lab during this time. Um, they say, you know, they are the science behind the medicine. So thank you to all of the laboratory professionals out there and happy National Lab Week, even though it was last week. So now we're gonna go to our Director of Human Resources who has a giveaway for our staff. And there's been a couple of different businesses in the area that have been doing some amazing things for frontline staff. And um, Blissful Memories Photography is one of them. Tiffany herself um, has a special announcement about that. 
All right, thank you, Sarah. So um, Blissful Memories is owned by Briley Ripley, and she is actually offering a one-for-one -one gratitude session right now. And this is a gift for um, someone who's out in the community dealing with um, the coronavirus and who's impacted by um, you know, being on the front lines. And so I have purchased um, a mini session for my family, and I would like to give that gratitude session to one of our employees here at the hospital. Um, so this session is worth $250. It's 30 minutes long. Um, you get 25 pictures and it's for up to five people. Um, so I think this, this is just a great way to show appreciation to our staff for everything that they do um, and having some of those memories with their family. Tiffany is going to go ahead and share her screen with us so we can see live which employee um, gets this gift. Okay, so I have our random number generator here with all the great colors. And then on the left, I actually have a list of our employees. So let's see who the winner is. This is exciting. Colorful. Yeah. Okay, number 26. It looks like this is going to be... Tam Tammy Thomas. So Tammy, Tammy Thomas is in our environmental services department and they have been working so hard um, at making sure that our facility is staying clean and safe and healthy for people to continue coming in and receiving services here at the hospital. Well, congratulations, Tammy. And Tiffany, is there anything else you just want to share with us today? I just want to say thank you to all of the staff here at William Newton. Um, you guys are just working so hard and we are so appreciative of everything that you do here. Um, it's one big family and our, I know that not only um, us as staff, we appreciate it, but I know our community really appreciates it as well. And thank you to Dr. Dennett and Emily Souter for joining us today. Uh, really good information. If you have suggestions on who you'd like to see on our new show next week, be sure to leave them in the comments. Um, and again, we do encourage you to talk to your doctor about the risk you have for coming into the clinic or coming into the hospital. It really is a safe place to be. We, we want to make sure that you feel comfortable and um, let us know what we can do to help with that. Take care and be safe.